Hello and good day. Welcome to our third Sunday meditation in August. I am glad you are with me and with each other, and I'm glad you're here to share in the good news. I invite you to share with me our call to worship for this day. Let us share together these words from the psalm. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to him. For he laid the earth's foundation on the seas and built it on the ocean depths. Who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies. They will receive the Lord's blessing and have right standing with God, their Savior. They alone may enter God's presence and worship the God of Israel. Indeed, that is true. Amen. As we gather today for our time together, I ask that we extend to each other the good news of Jesus. The good news that Jesus shared when he greeted people in a single word. A word that was simple in meaning, but implied welcome, well-being, presence, and peace. That Hebrew word is shalom. And I invite you to share that word with those with you and across the airwaves. The shalom of Christ. Shalom in Christ. The shalom of Christ be with you and be with yours. Amen. As we gather this day, we again light a candle. We light the candle as sign and symbol of our hope, our faith, our beliefs. And we light this candle to remember those who have passed away from the COVID virus, those who are suffering, and family and friends of those who have experienced loss and the illness let the light shine for them and let the light shine in our country for equality and racial justice let the light shine for hope for peace for well-being as i've said each sunday i'll say again the light shines in the darkness that is the light of god and the darkness can never overcome it The light shines for us. The light shines for us. The light shines through us. Amen. I invite you now to share with me this day our prayer preparation. Let us pray. O Lord, open our eyes that we may behold wondrous things glorious things, righteous things, spiritual things of beauty and understanding. Give us the wisdom to understand your teachings and the silence to listen when you speak. Order our steps and chart our course. We come to you with outstretched hands, willing to hold your hands. We trust and believe that you will see us through the darkness into your magnificent light. Continue to be there when we fall and surround us when we pray. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in the name of Jesus. Amen.
If you want to get to heaven Over on the other shore Stay out of the way of the bloodstained bandit Oh, good shepherd For Paul, one for Silas, one for to make my heart rejoice. Can't you hear my lambs are calling? Oh, good shepherd, feed my sheep. If you want to get to heaven Over on the other shore Stay out of the way of the long-tongued liar Oh, good shepherd, feed my sheep One for Paul one for silence, one for to make my heart rejoice. Oh, can't you hear my lambs are calling? Oh, good shepherd, feed my sheep. lesson this day is from the Revelation of John, in the 21st chapter, the first through seventh verses. John reveals this in his revelation. He says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God adorned as a bride for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them and they will be his peoples. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. 
mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be their children. As I read this lesson today, I pray that on its hearing, it be transformed from written word and spoken word to living word in our hearts and minds and spirits. Amen. The Revelation to John is one of my favorite books in the New Testament. The passage I read this morning is one of my favorite passages in the New Testament. I, t I will say I am partial to John's Gospel, John the Apostle's Gospel, and to John the Divine, the writer of Revelations. Whenever I read the passage, I usually read the first seven verses and omit, omit the eighth verse. Today I want to share that eighth verse with you because I am concerned about the politics that are now occurring in this country and the attitude of people in terms of how things are going and the behavior of those who are in res political responsibility. This is a personal opinion, but I think it applies to this time. John in the eighth verse says this, but as for the cowardly, the faithless, the polluted, the murderers, the fornicators, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars. Their place will be in the lake that burns with sulfur and fire, which is the second death. I believe we're dealing a time in which there is idolatry, inappropriate political behavior. When someone questions where a person was born and their right to run for office, I think, is a question. When a person who was recently won a primary says and claims that she is a Christian and then says belittling and derogatory comments about another politician, I think that is inappropriate and irresponsible. And I think there is going to be a cost and consequence to that. On the other hand, there is hope. Hope for us as a people, and particularly hope for us as an individual. John, in his journey through the apocalypse, comes to a point and says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first things had passed away, and the sea, which is often a source of terror, was no more. It will not be there. And I saw a holy city, the New Jerusalem. John was going through a time of crisis in his own life, a time of uncertainty. He was exiled to the island of Pas Patmos for his beliefs. I saw a new city, he said, coming down from heaven adorned as a bride for her husband. That heaven comes down to us. Heaven is not just some place there. The King of Heaven, as Christ has said, begins with and within us. As a place we find comfort and hope and healing in our times in our lives journey. And he said this also, the dwelling of God is with us. That God's own self will be with us. That in this time of illness, economic and political distress, God is with us and within us. 
And then these words, which I always find helpful in my own moments. God will wipe every tear from our eyes. Crying and pain will be no more. But these things will pass away. God is saying to us in this time, in this period, I am making all things new. God is helping us pass through this time with courage and faith that beyond their moment there will be transformation, renewal, and hope. As God says through John, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. That is true for us in our journeys. God is our beginning and the end, even in our own journeys. God is with us. To the thirsty. It's not just about physical thirst. It's about mental thirst. Moral thirst. Emotional thirst. That it will be refreshed. That God will provide us that moment, a spring from the water of life. God is with us. That as we go through these times in which there is uncertainty, fear, we can be, each of us, conquerors to overcome our own anxieties, our own uncertainties, our own anger and fear that God is there whose hand is out to hold us whose arm is there to embrace us and that we are the inheritors of these things if I may change John's words just a little bit God says I will be your God and you are my children. I am with you this day, and I hold your hand and wrap my arm around you as we pass through this time, that we see the new day, the new hope, the new moment. May the God of grace, the God of peace, the God of love through Jesus Christ be with you on your journey. We do not pass through this alone. We pass through this together with each other and with our God in faith. Go in peace. Amen. As we gather for prayer this day, I ask that we lift up in our prayers our nation, particularly those who are sick, suffering, dying from the COVID virus, their friends and family who are concerned and care for them, to lift up those who are seeking racial justice and equality, to those who are economically in difficulty, that a way be found to guide them through this time, to pray for the leadership of this nation, that they may lead with wisdom, knowledge, and respect for its people, to pray for our own needs in this time, to pray for the Hurley family who have gone through a time of loss, a time of pain, that you be with Karen's children to be their help and their strength. I invite you again to pray with me. Let us pray. Gracious God, our God, in whose image each of us is created, female and male, who has the breath of life given to us through your Holy Spirit, we pray this day you be with Karen's children to be their help, their strength. We pray this day for this nation, for those who are sick and dying from the pandemic, 
for their family and friends who are concerned and caring, that you be with them, that indeed you hold their hands and guide them through. We pray for those who are in economic distress because of economic conditions, that they have a hand that reaches out to them, that helps them and guides them through this time. We pray this day for those who lead this nation, that they would lead with wisdom, with courage, with humility, with care and compassion. We pray that your presence be there to guide them as they make their deliberations. Be with each of us this day and our family and friends as we pass through this time. And let us know, O oh Lord, each day that as we journey, your Son, our Savior, journeys with us. Your Holy Spirit is present within us. And you, our God, watches over us. Be with us this day and every day. This we ask in Christ's name. Amen. I invite you now to share with me the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I do pray as you go forth this week, you have a week of joy, hope, of expectation. I pray that as we go through this week, we pray for those who are in need, in body, mind, and spirits. And I look forward to us joining together again as we share our meditation and our good news of faith, hope, and love. And as we close this day, I invite you to share the benediction with me. Let us share together. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>